PU2 aspirants, so we are just left with 10 days for our final PU2 board exams and these last 10 days are very, very critical and it's the time to brush up your preparation, to fine tune your preparation, to make your preparation strategic and efficient, right? But sometimes what happens in this last 10 days, we become overwhelmed and we do some mistakes which can waste our all our hard work and I don't want you to go through this. So we all have gone through this uh, stage and I know there are some common mistakes I was also doing during my school days, during my college days and I want you not to repeat those mistakes. So in this video, I'm going to discuss seven most uh, common mistakes that students usually do in this last 10 days and their efficiency is decreased. So I'll be discussing in short. So please take a note of these seven mistakes and you have to put down in the comment section which mistake you are doing in this last 10 days of preparation. Okay, which mistakes you want to avoid for the next 10 days. I hope that is clear. Let's get to this. So in this video, we will be first talking about the introduction. Then we'll be discussing about the mistakes that you should avoid. And I'll also give you the solution for that. Okay. Next, we will also talking about the final conclusion that you can take away from this particular video. So first moving towards so this, as I told you, this last 10 days are very, very critical. It should be used in the best efficient uh, possible way. Okay. You should not do any such mistake which can ruin your preparation. So that is why I'm coming up with this video and we will see the first mistake that is last minute cramming. See, I was one of them who was doing this. I'm a very typical PCB type of students. Okay. So maths was something which I feel very difficult during my school days. Okay. So what I used to do is I used to remember the answers. I used to cram it. Okay. And when the such type of questions were asked in the exam, their numbers were changed. Okay. And I used to feel difficult that why my answer is not matching and it creates a lot of confusion. So the best possible way here is to avoid cramming. You have to say no to cramming. You have to understand. Okay. So there is nothing that you cannot understand. You have to think, sit calmly, study the concept, watch some video. If you are not able to uh, ask your friends to explain you, ask your teachers to explain you and try to focus on the concept and try to understand the concept. Okay. That is the first thing you have to do. And another thing, See, sometimes especially like let me take you an example of biology. You have so many big, big answers there. So many big, big concepts are there and you try to remember it, right? Do not do this mistake. So let me give you an example. For example, menstrual cycle, okay? A concept that is there in your human reproduction chapter. So if I show you the NCRT book, sorry, okay, one second. Yes. So if I show you the NCRT book in this particular thing, there is so big, big paragraphs are given. But if I am going to study this one, how will I study? I will just focus on the phases of the menstrual cycle, the days that is there from which day to which day, which phase is there. And then I will take what are the symptoms or what are the observations in that particular period. And I will try to focus on this diagram mostly than reading those two big, big paragraphs. Okay. I will try to understand this one. So here I can see, then I can see some diagrams or I can just watch some video. I can understand, okay, there is a first, there is a menstruation period, then we have follicular phase, then we have ovulation, then we have luteal phase. This is the first concept I have. Next thing I will understand from which period to which period it is there. Like for example, I can say, uh, we have from first day to seventh day, then we have seventh day to 15th day, something like this is days are there that I will understand, right? First day to ninth day, ninth day to I have almost this 20, 17 days. So something like this, I will understand the days. The third thing I'm going to study about what exactly is happening in that particular period. For example, menstrual uh, period, I will understand, okay, vaginal blood loss is there. Okay, uterine uh, lining bleeds. So this is what is happening there. So this is the level you have to understand it. So do not just cram it, learn it. It will make no use in the exam. You will definitely forget if you learn it without understanding. So please focus on understanding. You can understand in a simple way. Okay, you can ask your friends, your teachers, you can watch some videos. You can put us in the comment section. Also, we will explain you. Do not worry. Whichever concepts are doubt, we can have a doubt clarification classes, but it is my uh, like heartily request to all of you that please do not cram anything. Okay. Now going to the second mistake that most of us do is studying without a plan. 
I have like this situation comes when we have so many things to do and we don't know what to do exactly. We don't know how to prioritize the task. So for that, you when you get up today morning, you are getting up, you, you don't know what to start with, what to study with. Okay. Sometimes you make very unrealistic plan. You put 18 hours of studying for per day. I will study for 18 hours. And when you are not able to fill up that um, study plan, you feel demotivated, right? So these all things should not happen. What we should do instead, we should have a very achievable target, okay? You should have that, okay, these things are actually possible by me, that all things I will put. Next, you have to fix the chapters and not the hours. You should not put that, okay, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. I will study organic chemistry, haloalkins, haloarins. No, not like that. You have to have a mind that, okay, today is suppose 19th of February or 18th of February. Today, I have to complete this chapter. Okay, whichever time, how to complete, that is your decision. You can study half in the morning, half in the evening and complete it. That the chapters that to be done on a particular day should be fixed, not the time, not the hours. Okay. Next thing, you have to reward yourself. If you have, if you are fulfilling that particular day's target, then definitely it will motivate you, boost you. So give yourself a reward. Okay. And one thing that I can tell you is at this point of time, when we have complete holidays, uh, complete time is there for the pre preparation of the exam, you can easily give 10 hours for yourself, for your studies. It is possible. Okay. Now I'll also give you a schedule that yes, yes. So you can see here. Um, yes, you can see here that from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. I've given one small revision. 9 p.m. 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. three hours. You can take the difficult subject here. 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. you can take an easy subject here. 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. you can take moderate subject here. Then again in the last you have to do one hour of revision. So you can see how well distributed is this 10 hours. You have breaks in between. You I'll tell, talk about the breaks as well. Okay. And one more thing is what you are going to study the next day. That should be planned before day. Means tonight you should plan what you are going to study tomorrow morning. What all things study means which all chapters you are going to complete. So always focus on completing the high weightage topics first. Okay. Do not get worried that I so many chapters are left. I have not done anything. Do not feel like that. Just think one thing that what all weightage I have many times in many videos I have given you the weightage, right? So those weightage, high weightage topics should be completed first. Clear? Okay. Next, skipping breaks and relaxation. So we generally think that this is exam time. We have to only study, only study without any breaks, but that results to zero. Okay, so it is there is no use of studying if your brain is not refreshed, recharged. Okay, so you have to recharge your brain by taking breaks. Okay, this is very, very important. Otherwise, you are studying for the whole day, but nothing will come to your mind. You will not remember anything and that is completely waste of time. Okay, I, I remember during my college days, right? You remember in college days, what exactly we do is we chill throughout the year and we have to study in the last two days, right? So engineering colleges, this is where something that every student do. So what happens is I used to go to the library in the 9 a.m. in the morning and I used to come in the 10 p.m. at night from the library. But I used to stay throughout the day, but in the exam, I'm not able to recall anything. That is because I was not taking breaks at all. I was completely just going, reading, reading, reading. And after that, I was realizing that I am not remembering anything. So this should not happen. So please take proper breaks. Okay. So if you study without any uh, break, you will burn out. Okay? You will feel fed up. And especially if the subjects are uh, too much uh, memorize, memorization type subject, you will feel burnout there. Okay. And you will feel like you're forgetting everything, whatever you're studying. This was happening with me. So I've written it. It may or may not happen with you as well. So please make sure that you take short, regular and breaks or for relaxation. Okay. So this is not wastage of time. Please do not think that if you take a 10, 15 minutes break, you are wasting that time. It is recharging your brain. Okay. So recharging of brain will help you to remember new things. Then you can do Pomodoro technique. So please follow Pomodoro technique. What you have to do here, you have to just always study for 25 minutes and take a break of five minutes. Study for two hours and take a break of 15 minutes. Okay, so this break should be there. And when you take break, you have to do some uh, things like you can do mindfulness, like meditation, breathing, small exercises, listening to uh, like music. So something you can do, which will calm your, uh, calm your mind and will help you to focus better. 
Let's talk about the next mistake that most of us do is overloading on new material. Okay. So here I'll be telling you some guidelines that you have to follow. See, in the last 10 days, you should not go for something very new which you haven't studied for the whole year unless it is a very high weightage topic. Like for example, I'll give you maths. Okay, maths example. If you haven't studied linear programming for the whole year, you can still skip it. But if you haven't studied integration for the whole year and you are skipping it at this point of time, then definitely you are doing a blunder. So how will you do whether, how will you analyze whether you have to take that new topic or not? Okay, so new topic should be taken if and only if it is a high weightage topic. Okay, so please check the blueprint. If it is a high weightage topic, then definitely you have to do it. But if you have to do it in the last 10 days, will you be going to detailed solving each and every question? No. How you have to do? You have to directly first com complete the chapter by watching some one shot video where you have a list of all the formulas and directly jump to PYQs. Okay. Once it is done, you can then think of if you want to go for the next chapter or you want to go in depth. But the first thing that you have to do is you have to do a one shot of that chapter and then you have to do directly PYQs. This is the best way and the most effective way to complete a chapter in the last minute. Okay. And one more thing, if you are doing any chapter in the last minute, make sure that it is a very high weightage topic. Otherwise, please skip it. We focus on revising what you have studied. Okay. Next, we'll go to not solving past papers or mock tests. This is something, this was one mistake which I used to do very often during my board exams, okay. So I have never, like I didn't write uh, mock tests, full length papers. First, there are many reasons for that, okay. So generally first thing we think is syllabus we have not completed, right. So how can I write the full length papers if the syllabus is not completed? Second, sometimes we feel overconfident. I was having this problem. I used to think that I can write in the exam whatever it comes I can definitely write so no need to solve the papers and waste my time here instead of that let me read and study and revise some other concepts okay that was my mindset next we have fear to face the truth okay so we are actually fear that okay if I solve okay and if I see the marks that will demotivate me so better not to write the test okay this is what sometimes we feel the mindset but yes the consequences were like this in the board exam I remember in class 12th for especially maths exam I was like I don't want to waste my time in solving the papers I will do more question practice and this will help me in the exam so when I went for the exam I re remembered uh, it was in 2015 something when I was writing my 12th board exams, right? So there I re realized that in the maths exam, I was not able to manage my time. I was not able to complete the question paper in within the time limit, okay? In the last few minutes, I was so much panicked that I did very, very easy questions, simple calculations went wrong, okay? So these all things, I don't want you to suffer. So what you have to do, please write the past papers and mock test to familiarize with your exam pattern, okay? So you will be knowing exam format that will help you. You will also be having a time frame. You have to solve the question paper with three hours so that you actually know that how many questions, how many papers, how many uh, like how much you are able to write in that uh, like three hours of time. This is very very important. Next this builds confidence and improves time management for the real exam. Very, very true point and I have done this mistake. I have uh, seen the consequences in the exam, okay. So that is the reason I want all of you to write mock tests. At least PU board has released three, three model papers for each subject, right? Write at least one model paper before going to the exam in the full exam conditions, okay. That is my request to all of you. Please students do not do this mistake, okay. Learn from the mistakes of your teacher. Okay, so here I want to tell you something about our Abhyas KCT 2025 test series. So you know KSET examination is very near and we have launched our test series where you will be getting four tests absolutely free just by registering and the rest 31 tests will be, uh, you will be getting if you pay. Okay, so how much you have to pay? $14.99. So actually the cost of the test series is $14.98. If you pay one rupee extra, you will get our PU2 success blueprint test series, which was also designed where you have 12 mock tests. Okay. 
In this, you will be getting detailed video solutions, analysis, PDF solutions, one-shot revision videos, live doubt clarification classes, chapter-wise insight. Everything will be provided, a wholesome package for your preparation, for your top rank. So, yes, if you are interested, please check down in the description section. You will get the link for this. Please purchase it and it will help you to boost your KSET preparation. And with one rupee, you can also boost your uh, PU2 preparation. Okay? Fine. Next, mistake 6 is neglecting the weak areas. This many of the students do, they generally do not focus on the weak areas. Yes, you can do this mistake only if that weak area comes under low weightage topic. Like, for example, if I say in chemistry, a mines chapter you are very weak, you are not able to remember the mines reactions. Okay, so you can skip that because you have options with other chapters, you can read that chapter and you can manage the balance between these two chapters, right? But if you are having a fear about, as I told you, integration chapter, integration is your weak area, you cannot leave that chapter, right? That is the highest weightage topic in the whole examination. So make sure that you study at least the important questions, important concepts, important formulas of that particular weak chapter, which is a high weightage topic, okay? Next, uh, and in the weak areas, you have to spend a reasonable amount of time, okay, not the whole time. Then balance this with reviewing areas of strength to boost your confidence okay so you have to also study those topics which you are very confident and those topics which you are weak at so that a balance is maintained okay so next coming to ignoring health this mistake was also done by me okay i used to study during my college days especially when i was uh, doing my uh, uh, graduation at that time I used to like study for the whole night as I told you in engineering colleges we do not study uh, till the last day of the exam right and I used to study for the whole night and thinking that next morning I will write and come then I will sleep but when I go to the exam hall I feel used to feel vomiting nausea dizziness, and I was not able to focus in the exam and sometimes also due to bad food habits during the exam we study late night right so late night we also eat something snacking and these things we do in the late night which also leads to stomach issues in the morning before the exam so these all things we should avoid before our exam so please make sure that you take a very good sleep so at least six to seven hours of sleep is mandatory take a balanced diet okay and try to study in breaks with giving proper importance to your mental health clear so yes students that's all in this video so you have to avoid these common mistakes for the last 10 days and you have to stay calm stay focused and do not panic okay the exams are there everybody is going to write the exam and it is very common to get nervous at this point of time but do not panic think logically what you have to do what you should be doing where you have to devote your time which chapters will give you mark which chapters if you devote time it is a waste so at this point of time you have to be very very smart and work hard okay so that's all students and i want all of you to give me in the comment section out of these seven mistakes which you are going to stop okay so I hope this video was helpful and these seven mistakes you must avoid for your preparation and see you soon in the next session. All the very best my children. Uh, any help you need please do in the please put down in the comment section we will definitely address and this last 10 days is your make or break period study hard but yes with proper strategy okay bye bye students.